Uh, my journey began <clears throat> really in February, March of 2021, when uh, the vaccine program was rolled out. I started hearing anecdotal stories about deaths, injuries. They were anecdotes. And being a, a former stock picker, portfolio manager for BlackRock, and having been on the sell side, that piqued my interest. And I'm, a, I'm into pattern recognition. And then uh, the mandates came along in the summer, uh, summer, fall of uh, 2021. And I started to join um, anti-mandate rallies on Maui. And through that, I was eventually uh, able to meet Dr. Malone and become affiliated with him. I told him that I suspected that something possibly was going on with the vaccines. So I told him that I would investigate insurance company results, uh, funeral home results, and that I would monitor them and we'll see if anything, uh, you know, interesting or strange would happen. And sure enough, uh, in January of 2022, we got the first inkling that something was very wrong, potentially. Um, and that was One America uh, CEO, Scott Davison, was on a Chamber of Commerce call, and he wasn't aware that there was a reporter, um, Margaret Menge, from uh, City View in Indiana, following this Chamber of Commerce. And he mentioned that in the second half of 2021, all-cause mortality among especially working age members had rose to a stunning 40%. And just to put some frame around that, um, a 10% increase in excess mortality for this working age group would be a once in a 200 year flood. 40% uh, was just off the charts. And to understand why this is so significant is it was the group life business. And group life is a specific business. It's not individual policyholders. It's people that work for corporations. And I remember, and I'm sure many of you who have been employed in different corporations, when you onboard with the corporation, you sign your health care, and then you sign a death benefit that's given to you basically for free. Uh, and it's anywhere from 50000 to $200,000 policy. And, you know, if you're not married, you um, assign the beneficiary as your parents, or if you're married, it's your spouse. So when, when we all onboard and do these things, we never expect to collect. Well, in the second half of uh, uh, 2021, Scott Davison sent off the warning signal. And he, his company, which is a $100 billion insurance company, experienced just this incredible rise in, in deaths and claims. Um, fast forward to February, um, when the insurance companies start reporting, um, I started to see similar results from other companies. And Dr. Malone got me on uh, Steve Bannon, uh, Bannon's war room, where I started to talk about this. And I said that I wanted to be a lightning rod for this issue which meant I wanted people that had knowledge or anything to contribute to help. And one person immediately contacted me that weekend. Uh, he's coming public now, and he's, he's uh, going to come public on his own time frame. But his name's Josh Sterling. He's a former number one ranked insurance analyst on Wall Street, worked for Bernstein, which is a very well-known research equity shop. Uh, he was on the street for seven years. And uh, he agreed to help me analyze the insurance results. So this is really fascinating. And I just want to clarify, for the benefit of our viewers, what 40% actually means, right? So 40% is like a war. Uh, it's, in, it's not something that happens in the normal course of business. And in uh, 2020, when COVID was uh, raging through the country, we saw that mostly older Americans died, mostly old. In 2021, um, the COVID was still going on. The vaccine rollout had occurred, but we saw a mix shift from old to young working age people that in 2020 weren't affected by COVID 
to, to the same degree they were in the second half of 2021. And so this is, an, this is a, just an amazing statistical anomaly that just does not happen in the normal course of business and just life. Just in terms, in practical terms, you know, there's this sort of baseline rate of death, right? And this is like, you know, a 40% increase from that. That's why you're calling it a war. Uh, at, w to fast forward a little bit, Josh uh, started to look at CDC data. And the CDC data, as presented on their website, was lumped all ages. And so... What he was able to do was take the data, download it, and they did provide ages of the, of the deaths. So he was able to um, create age cohorts. And because he has actuarial training, he created a baseline from 2015 through 2019. That's how you calculate excess deaths. So you have to have a baseline from which to compare it against. And what he found, and what I found with analyzing the data with them was something very alarming. Uh, the age cohort uh, from 25 to 44, which we call the millennials, uh, experienced an 84% uh, rise of excess mortality into the fall of 2021, August, September, October. And the rate of change was just dramatic. So they were running around 40, 50% in the summer, and then this parabolic spike move up into the fall. Um, and it then tailed off and, and settled back down. But, you know, 84% rise in excess mortality for that age cohort represented about 61,000 Americans who perished from March of 21 to February of 2022. And 61,000 deaths is the, is the same as uh, the Vietnam War casualties we, we experienced over 10 years where 58,000 Americans died. So something happened. I mean, my opinion is that it's the vaccines. That can be debated. We can talk. I'd love to debate anybody. The problem is there doesn't seem to be any interest in debating that issue, nor am I allowed to talk about it on certain platforms. That's all we're asking for is the ability to at least bring this, this, this tragedy uh, to light and then discuss why it's occurring. Before